Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Low Magic Age, the open world sandbox turn based game of D&D. Still in development, but very, very highly developed already. For those of you who played the game and have no idea what changed, um, a lot. And for those of you who were thinking, how do I deal with this new open uh, lock and disable device skill and where do I get it? Well, this will all be explained in this video. So without any further ado, of course, we're doing a new adventure. We're doing maximum difficulty, no loading nor saving, maximum level uh, cap. We'll make manual level up because our people will die. You cannot revive them, so we'll have to recruit people from town and train them up ourselves. With that being said, let's see what heroes we choose. I have taken a different approach this time because there are two new skills and you have to in my eyes to have rooks in your team uh, to deal with traps and locks and the like and there is skill assistance so if one more than one person in the team has the skill he can assist the others in doing the job so that's the reason i've taken three rogues and three clerics the clerics will take the healing part and the uh, tanking part more or less and the rooks will do the damage dealing with sneak attacks and two weapon fighting now you will wonder why they have so much strength why don't i take just dexterity and go for finesse well the point is you can go for finesse and use your light weapons with dexterity to hit but your damage modifier will still be terrible if you don't have the strength so just skip that go for strength right away and you will do a decent amount of damage with that being said I have given them a decent amount of hit points as well, so the difference is just one hit point, so that should be totally okay in my eyes, at least that's what I hope. Um, with their intelligence, they should be able to learn all the skills to keep us alive, to open the chests and to disable the locks. And the clerics will um, give us the buff in combat. And with three of them, there should always be one able to heal someone who is wounded. As for the skills or feats, better so to say, we have taken, uh, of course, two-handed fighting uh, with the rogues and weapon focus so that we can get uh, at the next feat to get damage on both weapons bonus, which would be very important because that are damage dealers with sneak attack and the two weapons and the weapon skills and the strength. Our thieves will deal a lot of damage because what happens often is that you fight with two weapons, you go all for dexterity and you're doing almost no damage. Um, that is not good. And there are a lot of enemies who are immune to sneak attacks keep that in mind and with this strength combination they'll also be able to deal damage to those people um, the clerics will go for armor shield you know take it and deal damage with the maces they're not doing great damage but they will do okay with that being said let's jump right into it uh, we're shipwrecked for those of you who don't know the uh, story we'll have we start with one of our heroes and we have to find the others um, our hero has all have the same. They have a scalemer, they have a light shield and a light mace, and they have simple tools. At the moment, we don't have the open lock skill or the disable device skill, so um, yeah, we'll better be careful. There are this new forest where you can get uh, resources to build your stuff. There's crafting now, and we get assistance that we will bear, uh, hardly uh, that we will um, need urgently because. We are in our heads here. We're playing this in the highest possible devil level. Just look at all the options you have in com com combat. It's beautiful. The game is beautiful. This is D&D as it should be in my eyes. I played all the old games um, of D&D. Those on the um, C64. And I totally love them. Um, but I find this even greater. Now we can use the rocks to some effect, I hope. Um, the Goblin Impaler. Uh, we should try to concentrate damage on one guy. The only problem is um, that I'm not sure we can outflank them. I don't think we can. Because we're too slow. But at least we can keep this guy from helping his friend. Wow, that was a lucky hit. By the way, for those who don't know, um, critical attacks are the most likely way for you to get killed. Because, who wonders? Uh, critical hits do a lot of damage and your people are not taking that very well. 
By the way, this is also the way the uh, clerics work, uh, the thieves work. They have a lot of attacks, they have a lot of um, critical attacks. We should try to heal our friend, so we're using potions of heal. He's not dead because in the first two fights your people cannot die because they're needed for the storyline. After that you're just toast. <laughs> That's how it is. I didn't. I didn't make that up. Um, okay, and here we are. We have no cover. That's beautiful. Okay. Now we could try to flank that guy a little by him going here and him maybe going here. Maybe we can use that to get that guy into a little bit more trouble than he already is. That was beautiful. They're just using their throwing weapons. Oh boy, they have a lot of people. We're a little bit in over our heads. Now, we could go here and get a flanking bonus on this guy. However, it is not really a lot we get here. Ah, crap. This is just going beautiful. Okay, I think we should try to take out this sucker. You should try to heal yourself up. Maybe we can divide them a little. That would be good. So far, he's not that lucky in hitting. But we're not either. Uh, that is a problem. We could take a step back. Divine favor, remove fear. Turn is not going to help. So the only chance we have is try to maneuver. This guy is the real problem. We're just healing ourselves up, but that is not going to help us in the long run. If we're not able to take out one of these guys, we're dead. But we've made that easy for them to, to strike us down because we separated. So this is a fight one-on-one -on -one now with him helping. Good. Now at least we're getting somewhere. We're healing ourselves up. That is something they cannot do. I don't care if they kill her. Now we've got you cornered, my friend. Not the plan, but still working. Beautiful. Now look at that, a heavy backpack. There might be something in there. We're getting experience, we're getting coin, and we're getting reputation. Reputation is very important. Woohoo! We've got an item, and we've got a new quest. And look at that, our team is here. Now that is plus two strength bonus. We could give that to him so that he will do, for example, look at this. He will do uh, plus nine, but if we give that to one of our uh, rogues, it should increase the damage of both. So the damage total is two points higher. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at that. There's all kinds of stuff there. Um, that is not interesting. Plus two. Now you will notice another thing. He can equip that and the strength will not go up because the strength bonus only works once. But here you can see it goes up as well. That is a chain shirt. But they're not trained in that kind of armor. So if we equip that, the armor class will go up, but our attack will... Wait, is, does that count as light armor? Oh, it counts as light armor, so they can actually use that. Interesting. Light mace we have, masterwork, throwing axes. We could equip their light weapons. So in theory, that would work like this. But you see, we're not getting the bonus because we're not proficient with that. So that is not exactly helping us. We could search, but we've only got a 10% chance, but we can increase that. Now for the skills. We get a bonus to concentration with him. Bonus to concentration with the... Or you get heal. You are the rogue. So I want you to get better at searching, at listening. It's their class skill, so they will be better at this anyway. And you see we have enough points left. 
everything will be all right. Because rogues get a lot of points just for being rogues and having a high intelligence. We'll need all that points later. Um, when we have the open lock skill, which we should try to get as fast as humanly possible. You will just go for, uh, you know, both of them. Now, can we look, can we lurch search again? Now it's 30%. Now there is a trap. We don't have the disarm trap skill. So we'll stay away from that at all circumstances because that will not help us or benefit us anyway if we try that. Woohoo! Quest done. We need to own 10 supplies. That's not a problem. We buy 15 supplies, we've done the quest, we get the XP, we travel to Napatal. Let's see if they've got any good quests here. They've got heroes, and they've got a lot of stuff, but nothing that we need. And we can sell the items we're no longer using. We can sell the backpack, we could sell the crossbows, we're not into that stuff. We could, theoretically, with the uh, rogues, but nah. Now we're good. Now what we should do under all circumstances is stay away from those traveling monsters because they are a threat. We could go to Moonport just to see if they've got a quest for something. Uh, we could buy spell materials, but they are very expensive. Please remember that buying spells, uh, casting spells, cost you spells, spell materials, and that is uh, expensive. Now, this is a masterwork maze. Please keep in mind that that is not a magic weapon. So just that it means it's plus one does not mean it's magic. It just means it gives you plus one to attack. Um, good idea, yes, but no. We should, under all circumstances, buy those. And the simple tools I think we should buy as well. Because they're relatively, um, th that is a, an, a resource you use up. The skulls that you see all over the place, um, they tell you how dangerous the dungeon is. So for example, red means no, no. Yellow means nah. Uh, green means mmm, and gray means <laughs> no problem. So I, I hope that was clear. I know that was just noises, but I, I think you got the key. You you got the you got the uh, message. So here you see this little sign here. That means that we can learn the skills here. Look at that, adventurers guild. But we'll have to sell some items in order to get that done. So we're selling the potion of heroism. And we're selling those two potions that will give us some coin. Trade that. Yes, they have beautiful weapons. They have a silver flail. They have a light crossbow, a padded armor, an amulet of natural armor. Mwah! Beautiful. Absolutely outstanding. But we're here for something else. We want to learn the open lock skill. And of course, we only want to learn it with those who are able to learn it. Uh, which are this three, but that will cost us 600 gold. Um, tell you what, we'll do it different. Um, this three will learn the disabled device. And then two of them will learn... Okay, we need 10 golds. That is not even enough. If I sell you this, oh, I, I hate selling healing potions, but you get the point. Sometimes you have to make uh, the call. Beautiful. Yay! Do they have anything else? Not that we could afford it at any point. So we'll leave. Now, look at us. We're now theoretically able to conquer the world. Um, we have a lot of skill points that we should immediately put to use. Here, you've got the disabled device and open lock. And you can get proficient with that. That means the more you do it, um, the more you will get better at it to a certain point, which is limited by the skill points you invest. 
So, but when we look at the characters now, they have search seven, disable device seven. So we should be able to do a lot good with that. We should be able to get a lot of stuff this way. So um, next time we'll go dungeoneering, killing stuff. And I would be glad if you give me some feedback, tell me what do you like, what didn't you like, what should I do, what should I not do. Um, of course, we'll be traveling to uh, Natbal next. And yeah, see you all next time. Bye.